There are a lot of rumors about moving to Florida, so in today's video, we're gonna go over the truth about living in Florida. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing that we wanna go over is the climate here in Florida. And Florida's pretty large, right? So we get a little bit of some different climates. You know, if you're further south, if you're near Miami, or even like a little bit more central, maybe in Tampa, you're gonna have different weather than say, here in the Florida Panhandle. We actually get some cold days, like four whole cold days. And like sometimes five. Jacket. Sometimes five, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, the further north that you go, you will start to see some much colder temperaments than you will then say down in Miami. There is quite a disparity. Also, um, we have a time change in Florida. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. Don't so, know. you know, around somewhere in the panhandle, it swaps from Eastern time zone to Central time zone. So that always gives us a great, you know, little hiccup here and there when we're booking appointments with people across the country because they all assume that we're in Eastern. So little known fact for you, we do have Central time in part of Florida as well. So we do get, a lot of heat. All of Florida has some fairly tropical weather. You're going to see it a bit more humid, a bit more warm, you know, in the central and southern areas and a little bit cooler for Florida up here in like the panhandle in the northern parts of Florida. But something that we all share is the mosquitoes. Oh, that's true. We have lots of mosquitoes. We call them uh, Florida birds here or bats because they are huge sometimes. And in fact, I've been getting chewed up while I sleep a lot. You can see on my arm. Oh my it's God. not good. Yeah, I've been getting chewed up. I hear them buzzing around my, my ears. I don't know why they're still surviving in my house, but we do have mosquitoes. So on top of the mosquitoes or the skeeters, as we call them here in the South, we also have a ton of other wildlife as well. You guys have probably all seen on the news or the weather, wherever you're watching different things that are happening here in Florida. We have alligators. In fact, just the other day, we had all in one day, I'm not kidding, in our area alone, this is not the whole Florida, this is just here on the Emerald Coast, which is the Panhandle, we had an alligator, we had sharks, we had, what is it, stingray? Stingray, and dolphins. Dolphins and, and a, bear. a bear coming out water. of the Gulf of Mexico. This isn't just like a bear in the forest, a bear in the actual water. And a lot of people are really surprised to hear that we have bears in this part of Florida, but we do. And they're actually fairly prevalent. In fact, I've got one in my neighborhood that always comes out to eat my trash. <laughs> butthead <laughs> <laughs> and they're everywhere too and these bears they don't care like what kind of neighborhood you're in you know a lot of people will ask us you know what's the what's the safety rating what's the crime rating in this area well bears don't care bears are going to be through all of them gated community doesn't matter fenced in yard doesn't matter if you've got a trash can you might have a bear yep now, because we have all of these great things and it's a great environment for lots of critters and things, that also means we get lots of really cool things right here in Florida. So all of the outdoor activities you can imagine, whether it's going out and going on the actual water, or if you wanna go hiking. Uh, I know our hiking isn't super great here. We don't have big mountains, but we do have some great trails, lots of great little things to see, springs, lakes, natural lakes. Um, we even have dune lakes out here. We've got uh, boating, fishing, rivers. rivers, biking, walking, like this is an outdoor person's dream. If you love being outdoors, Florida is the place for you. It is going to be warm most of the time that you're outside, but trust us, it is worth it. Oh, I can't believe you forgot to mention all the golfing. Oh, <laughs> There's oh so yeah, much golfing. Of golfing. I can't believe I, out of all people, forgot about the golfing. We have golf courses everywhere. Throw a rock everywhere. somewhere, there's a golf course there. It's a little ridiculous. But, you know, with all of this fun in the sun and all these great activities, there's got to be some kind of balance in the universe, right? And so <laughs> God gave us hurricanes. Sorry. So, you know, some of y'all, y'all have some uh, earthquakes or tornadoes, which we had tornadoes oh, God. here it's recently. Been tornado alley. You're crazy. No yeah. pun intended for like the last, I don't know, week, week and a half or yeah. so. Every little place. In fact, we're shooting this about four hours later than we normally do because Miss AJ here was stuck because there was tornadoes all around her and she was waiting to be taken home. Yeah, I was like, I I really, I really want to go do YouTube, but I'm not going to drive through a tornado. Yeah, so, move. yeah, so we played it safe. It might be a little bit darker than usual, but you know, we're still here for you. And that shows our dedication to you guys. And showing our dedication, I'd also like to let y'all know that we are realtors here in Florida. So if you have any intentions or curiosities about purchasing in the area, I'm AJ and this is Andrew. And and uh, all of our contact information is on the screen. So if you have any questions, go ahead and give us a call, text, or email. <laughs> That's my Vanna White impression. <laughs> it's like the modern day Vanna White, Andrew White, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now with hurricanes means that we need to prepare a little bit here in Florida. You don't just move to Florida to be unprepared. <laughs> Actually, that's exactly what I do. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay, so that's what most <laughs> of us Floridians do. But the first time you move here, you should take some precautions and get a hurricane preparedness kit. We do have a link down below of our hurricane preparedness checklist. If you need one, if you think you're gonna be moving down here, you can go ahead and check it out. But just the basics, keep some food around, some non-perishable food, some extra water, fill up your tubs and your sinks in the event that you don't have water access, you still have some extra drinking water there. And if you want a generator for your home, although most of us don't, or a lot of us buy it when a hurricane is hitting and then we try to take it back, which by the way, Florida, like Lowe's and Walmarts and Home Depots, they don't let you send it back. Okay. So if you buy a generator, you're stuck with it. So just be prepared for that. Now, hurricanes are not near as bad as most people think. We get a lot of inquiries about it. And a lot of people mention how dangerous that they feel like they're going to be. We've been here about, I don't know, 17 or 18 years now at this point, And we've been hit directly multiple times, but like a hard hit, maybe only one once or twice and even that was not overly terrible although some other people might have different experiences with that mm. but my house was fine <laughs> yeah his house was fine we just came over to my house to take pictures yeah well you lived on the water so if you do live on the water be prepared for a little bit more opportunity for some damage so just prep for that we do have lots of other things that will protect you against these hurricanes and just note that we also have tornadoes we've got torrential downpours rains tropical storms all of this stuff is part of living in florida but i can tell you this outside of a hurricane, all you have to do if you don't like the weather is just wait about 15 minutes and it'll be changed. And the other thing about that is to, you know, you kind of choose your your dangerous, right? Do you want hurricanes or do you want earthquakes or do you want tornadoes or something with zero warning? With us, you know, we know we're going to have a hurricane usually a week or more in advance. That's plenty of time to board up your house, close up the shutters, move the cars, move the boat and go on vacation for a week. A little impromptu vacation up north away from the hurricane. Good idea. Yeah, it's so easy. You know, it, when we see, you know, deaths and such a lot of times, it's because, it's because people decided they were going to be like a hashtag Florida man, which like all about it, really. Like we've all got a little bit of crazy in us. You know, we're in like the Australia of the US, you know, but the the rest of the time it's you're living in paradise. You know, how many people have to either fly or drive hours upon hours to get to the closest beach and here in Florida? I mean, and that's... our beaches at that. Now I'm yeah. being biased, but our beaches are amazing here on the Emerald Coast. I'm not knocking any other part of Florida. You guys have great beaches too, but... They're just oof, not as good. They're just not the same. <laughs> but we love y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Now, one of the other really important factors to note before you move to an area is the cost of living and the housing. And this is where a lot of people, I think, get Florida wrong. I think there are definitely portions of Florida where the housing is outrageous. Let's be honest, certain counties, I'm not gonna mention you, Miami-Dade, or any of those other areas, some of the pricing is really, 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 really high. But most of Florida, if you were to take the overall portion of Florida, it's actually about two to 3% cheaper than the average across the country. So just keep that in mind. If you are looking at one of those bigger cities, you're probably going to expect or expect to pay a little bit more. However, if you're not, you want to live on the outskirts, you want to live in an area like we are out here in Destin, Florida, Fort Walton Beach, Florida. That's kind of the area that we service everything from Pensacola to Panama City Beach and everything in between. Well, the cost of living is actually fairly good here, depending on which city you choose. So we do have certain cities in our market that are a little bit more overpriced above the national average. And then we have others that are far below the national average. And a lot of people are pretty surprised to hear that. And still super close to the beach. Oh, and by the way, we're Florida, so no income tax, no state income tax. So, yeah, which is uh, fantastic. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, Thank think, you, tourists. Yeah, I think yeah. the average around the country is what, like 6 or 7%. Something and because crazy. of all of our tourism, we don't have to pay a dime that, of that here, which gives us a little bit more cost of living leeway. So while our prices are already a little bit lower, we also don't pay state. Like, there's so many fun. wins. And you're close to the beach. And you get to watch swimming bears. So, yeah. <laughs> Now, speaking of cost of living and housing, if you are curious about that area that we were talking about, Pensacola to Panama City Beach, we do have an entire channel here, as you're noticing, because you're watching a video on it. So if you want, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ding that little bell, and you'll get information all across our entire area. We do everything from cost of living to exactly what it looks like to live in our area. So feel free to subscribe if that would be beneficial to you. And if it's not beneficial to you, share it with your friends. It'll help them. Yeah. 
So while we're sitting here thanking our tourists, maybe you're one of them. Maybe you came across our video because you've been to our area and you're like, oh my gosh, maybe I want to know the truth about Florida. What was I missing out when I went over we there? appreciate you. Yeah. Like, what was Mr. Oz doing behind the curtain in Florida? I want to know. <laughs> but so thank you to all our tourists. And if you're moving to Florida, then it's something that you need to be aware of is we do have some pretty heavy, you know, peak tourist seasons, especially in, you know, coastal parts of Florida and sometimes even in like the central area. Areas because even our central areas are still pretty close to the beach and our beaches are just amazing and they're warm you know it's not like California where it's cold all the time you need a wetsuit like year-round here in Florida most of the time you're you're pretty good um, but we get a lot of tourists not just for the beaches but because of the wildlife that's there in our waters you know a friend of mine he was telling me he was out in the water just a couple weekends ago when there was a manatee that just swam right by him oh wow no kidding a manatee it's awesome and there are some places all throughout Florida where you can watch you know the manatee Manatees migrate. And then we also have these um, man made, uh, what are they called under the water where like fish and stuff will come to them? Oh, yeah. Um, what are they called? Oh my God! I know, right? Man, it's not coral, but a man-made man-made reef. Reefs, thank oh my you. Jeez, words. So we have these man-made reefs that we actually put out there for the wildlife to kind of attract them, and they're in like various designs. So like one's like a dolphin, and one's like a trident. Starfish, like yeah. it's actually pretty cool. They sometimes they sink ships right off the edge to create an artificial reef as well. It's super cool, and the sea turtles love them. So you can like take your paddleboard or a kayak out and just anchor it, and then just snorkel around the. Dolphins will come by, sharks, everything. It, it's such an experience. So whether you're looking to move here or visit here, like take the opportunity. It is so worth it. And those of you that are worried about being actually on the water, I know there's a lot of people that don't like seeing that sea life. I know I don't like going scuba or snorkeling myself because I, I just feel like we're in their territory. But if that happens to be you, don't worry. There's plenty of stuff to do on top of the water that you don't even have to get into. You can go over to Crab Island, which is a popular spot here in our area. Of course, there are different parts of Florida that have different attractions and things. But yeah, caverns. Yeah, caverns. You can jump in a boat and go fishing. You can jump in a boat and just go float around, tool around, get pulled in a you know little speedboat with one of those little, what do you call them? The little, uh, where do they pull you? Like a float? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> in a float. I knew she was going to help. This is why I keep you here. Oh. But lots and lots of stuff to do from the tourism side. But that does come with one small drawback. That means that some of these coastal towns in particular are going to have tourist seasons and local seasons. This is kind of like an up and a down, a pro and a con, if you will, because when they do come here, it does increase our traffic. And that is one thing that our area here on the Emerald Coast that we do have to worry about a lot because we basically have one main road going in and out through our whole area because it's a big coastal town, right? Um, all the way through. So sometimes traffic does get a little bit rough. But... That also means we have local seasons, which means all of these amazing places that everybody flocks to and they have the best experience, they have the best food, they have the best, like they just really know what they're doing because of the amount of people coming in and out. It also means you get that with no tourists during local season, which is great. And generally you get a discount too, which is, you know, just kind of an added bonus. Yeah, that's an added bonus on top of all the other bonuses. <laughs> right. And also, even though, you know, we do get a lot of traffic, our traffic is nothing like say DC or San Antonio. It, it's just not, unless there's a crazy wreck and we do get, we get quite a few wrecks. We call it Bloody 98 because a lot of folks, like there are areas that you can't turn and people just not paying attention, not knowing where they're going. So there are a lot of wrecks here, but our traffic standards are still, <laughs> we think it's heavily trafficked and folks will come down here and they'll be like, oh no, this, this is nothing. Yeah. But here in Florida, if it's a 15 minute drive, it takes you 25 minutes. We get a little on it because, <laughs> well, you know, we're just used to it. Yeah, we're trying to be at the beach. <laughs> Now, another really good thing about Florida in general is that it's kind of a melting pot of a little bit of everything. And I know that America as a whole is a big melting pot. But there is something about Florida. We get people from all over. It doesn't matter what state you're from. People come flocking into Florida, which might be a bad thing to some folks. But to me, it's a pretty good thing. We get a very diverse culture. And the coolest thing is there's something for everybody, not just like in the activities, but also in the types of restaurants and the types of things to do and the shopping.
thing. Like they made sure that there's a little bit of everything because there's so many different cultures. Everybody can get a little bit of that pie. Yeah, we've got people coming to the area, not just because of tourism and then staying and retiring here, but also a lot of different industries are here. And of course, the military, we've got so many military bases all across Florida, which of course is going to be all different types of diversity. So yeah, we're going to get all kinds of different um, countries, all different states, all different accents. You'll find that if you uh, if you're in kind of the Northwest Panhandle kind of area, you might uh, hear a bit more of like a country twang. And then if uh, you head real deep into, you know, southern, southern Florida, it starts to become a little bit more, you know, like Hispanic. So it's it's very different everywhere that you go, but there's love everywhere. It's a wonderful place because you can you can drive down the street and you've got all different kinds of restaurants, activities. Just here in the Panhandle, we've got all different types of like dancers too. You know, we've got Latin dancers and then we've got country dancing and then we've got swing. So all kinds of stuff. So it just, the whole area runs the gamut of different experiences from different areas. It's a really, really great experience. Now, for those of you thinking about moving to Florida and you're curious about the education and our school system here, well, a quick Google search will show you that we are actually fairly high up there in schools in general. Now, of course, there are good areas and bad areas just like anything else, but I can really only speak to our area because, well, we don't live in the Tampa or the Miami or the insert any of those other cities. So here in our area, they do rank fairly well. In fact, we've got some of the better ranked schools in the entire state, actually, and they rank fairly high as far as the country as well. So we're super fortunate for that. But with that comes a little bit of a downfall is that housing prices in those areas with the great schools tends to trend a little bit higher because, well, go figure, people want their kids to be in good schools. I can't believe I'm saying that. That's weird that people want to do that. <laughs> and apparently they'll pay more for it. So we start to see prices climb up a little bit more. But the great thing is that you also get more. So you start to see a lot more amenities. You start to see a lot more parks and like cleaner areas and such. That's not to say that the areas where the schools aren't ranking quite as high have like gone to garbage or anything like that. At least not in our area. Yeah. Our area is very, it's pretty great across the board. Even the ones that are ranking lower than the others. If you compare them to the rest of the state or even to the U.S., they're still ranking pretty high. Yeah. Something that's really popular in Florida is homeschooling. I mean, it's not really surprising. We have a pretty well red state and that seems to be something that kind of goes hand in hand. And so we have a lot of homeschooling communities, at least in our area, we've got quite a few co-ops and just communities where people are getting together so that the kids are still getting that really necessary socializing and they're able to work under, you know, umbrella schools, which you can register as a private school. There, there's so many options. We have regular private schools, homeschools, public schools, schools, charter schools, STEMs, like there is absolutely everything that you could think of. If you have this specific need for your child, chances are you're going to be able to find it in Florida. Part of the reason why we bring this up, particularly the homeschooling, is because we are getting calls, texts, and emails pretty consistently of people asking questions like this. We just want to make sure that we reference it in these videos. But if you do have any questions at all, all of our information will pop up on the screen. If you have any deeper questions that maybe we don't answer in this video, don't hesitate. Give us a call, text, or an email. We absolutely love hearing from you guys. But Let's continue. Whenever COVID hit, a lot of people realized that uh, they could work remotely and from wherever they wanted. So we started to see a big influx of people into the area, which also, you know, brought a bit more funding into the area, if you will. So our prices have gone up a little bit, but along with those prices have also been the industries. So we've got quite a bit of career opportunities, great opportunities here in the state of Florida, whether you're in healthcare, military, DOD, if you're in, you know, tourism or, um, hospitality. I don't know why words are so hard today, <laughs> but we just have just all kinds of employment opportunities so that you can live and work in paradise. So once you've come down here and you've found your new job or maybe find your job before you move down here, if you're moving down here, now we need to look at the community and quality of life, which, you know, maybe I'm biased. Nah. Probably not. But I believe our community is top notch here. In fact, I've lived all over the country. Heck, I've lived all over the world. I've lived in about 20 different places. I was a military brat growing up. I have been some places. I've been on the West Coast. I've been the center of the country. I've been over here, north, south, east, you name it. I've been there and I absolutely love the community here. I'm not just saying that because I live here currently. I didn't move out of this area. I've been here 15 years, 20 moves before then. So you can put that in perspective. That's a move a year. I was around 20, 21 years old when I moved here and I couldn't leave when I got out of the military. 
military, like I could not leave. I was going to go back home and I'm like, nope, not doing it. Not just for the beaches because let's be honest, look at, look at I'm not going to survive out on the water that much. I don't, I don't handle the heat all that well, but it's just everything else. It's a sense of community between your neighbors. It's the sense of community when you go out to a restaurant and the sirs and the ma'ams and the yes, please. And thank you, which I know, you know, we're living in a new world where some of that might be kind of sliding away. That's okay. But I really like how it is down here. And on top of that, the quality of life I really feel like it's outstanding here. Like the fact that on a lunch break, I can drive literally about eight minutes this direction and I'm sitting on a beach and I can eat my pub sub, sitting on the beach, enjoying the waves, zone out for an hour, kind of recollect my thoughts if it's a rough day or boost my day if it's an already awesome day and then head back into work, finish with what I want to do, go home and enjoy the crickets at the end of the night while I'm, you know, sitting, drinking a nice cold soda pop on my back porch. Like I just, I just can't think of anything better. It is pretty awesome. Yeah. And you know, we get sunshine all the time. You know, I'd say year round on average, it probably rains five to seven days out of the month, unless it's like June to August during our hurricane season. And then it's like 11 to 12 days out of the month. But for the most part, we've got sunshine. So we're all getting that vitamin D and then we've got the salt water right there. So just so many like kind of healing energies when we get a little woo woo with your hair, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a real thing. You know, it really does. It, it boosts your mood and happy people do nice things. So I think that's a big attributor to why life is so good here in Florida. And what's really cool is a lot of times, even when you get those rainy days, like I mentioned earlier, you just wait a little bit of time and it goes away. Like for instance, yesterday was a prime example of this. It must have had two pretty big little, big, big little, little, big little <laughs> storms coming through. Just a little bit of torrential downpour, and then right in the middle, beautiful sun for four hours, and then it rained again for two hours, and then the sun popped right back out before it inevitably went down over the horizon at the end of the day. That's kind of the cool thing is that even if you think your day is ruined, like I've lived in states before where like it starts and it doesn't stop. It's raining all day. It's not, and then that doesn't happen as often out here unless of course there's a storm in the Gulf and that's what we're dealing with. So now you know the truth about Florida, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful. So if you haven't already decided to move to the area, then just watch some more of our videos and you will have uh, said yes. <laughs> and if you've made it this far in the video, then clearly you found something that was worthwhile. So please go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Oh, it's over here. We I don't always know if that's it. actually true. I think I it's, always point. It's one here. of these it's, directions. It's got a little thumb and it's like, hey, what's up? We liked what you did. <laughs> Go ahead and click that so that other people know that they're going to see some great information in our videos as well. It helps us and it helps us help. It helps us and it helps us help <laughs> others. We'll see you all the next one. See you.